All right, welcome to episode number three of Song Production for Guitars featuring Luna, the recording system from Universal Audio, and me, your host, Corey Congilio. I'm gonna be talking you through how I integrate Aux, the amp top box, also from Universal Audio, into my recordings with my beloved tube amplifiers. I have some great modern and vintage amplifiers that I can plug into Aux, harness their tone, and really kind of manipulate it inside of Aux the way I would want to, as if I was in a studio with great microphones, a number of speaker cabinets, room sound, and post effects. So here's a brief overview of how I connect Aux. There's another video I did that's really in depth on my YouTube channel. Um, we'll put a link below so you can check that out too. And uh, I think it's gonna help explain even further how I get tones. But here's a brief overview of how I hook it up because you're probably gonna wanna know that. I come out of Aux, well basically from my guitar to my pedal board, I hit this tube reverb, which I'm not gonna use in this example because I wanna use the effects that are in Aux. So pretend this isn't here, it just looks pretty darn cool. We go from this into my 100 watt two rock Bloomfield drive, and then out of that into aux, no speaker cabinet. Now, I could hook a speaker cabinet up in line, so I could go amp, aux, speaker, and I can attenuate that speaker with this speaker volume knob right here, okay? And that's really useful if you have a loud amp and you wanna kinda pull it back a little bit uh, in your studio or in your house, you don't wanna kill the neighbors or wake the baby, that sort of stuff. Uh, but once you kinda turn that down, you start to send signal out from the line output here, now what you're doing is you're sending a, an, a, not an attenuated, but more of a processed signal in the best way possible uh, to your DAW or to Luna ultimately in this case via your Apollo interface. Now, that signal <laughs> has a whole host of things attached to it. Different speakers, different microphones, room sound and post effects. There's a whole host of great speaker cabinet models called dynamic speaker models that um, will really sort of enhance your guitar sound like you probably haven't heard it before because when do you get a chance to really plug your amp into 20 some odd speaker cabinets? Not often. You're gonna be able to do that with Aux and you'll see a graphic pop up uh, in the example when I record. Now, you'll also be able to add room sound. Room sound in your guitar recordings really makes things sound full and sound organic because when you're in the room, that's really how you're hearing the, the amplifier. And the greatest guitar sounds that we've ever, ever heard or witnessed or longed for generally had room sound attached to them, which means there's a microphone in the room, not just on the speaker miking the amp. So you're able to do that and adjust that to taste in aux as well. And as for the post effects, you're gonna be able to add compression, uh, EQ, delay, and reverb. We'll be using all of those, maybe minus EQ, because we've got some great EQ on the amp and I think we'll be, be good to go. But you'll see uh, via the graphic that pops up um, on the screen, you can adjust what's going on inside of Aux to kind of you know, make it do your bidding. You know, you want a 410, great. You want a 212, great. You want a 412, great. You want to use a dynamic microphone, a condenser, all that's possible. Okay, so that's a brief overview of Aux. I'll be using that for these next two tracks in the video. Let's dive in and check it out. All right, so now that we have a brief idea of what Aux is, and there's plenty of videos on doing a deep dive into Aux, feel free to check my YouTube channel for that. Um, we want to integrate it into Luna to create a couple more tracks here. Uh, this is not uncommon in the world of modern country to layer a bunch of interesting guitar parts. Um, sometimes, you know, I feel like as a guitar player, with all of the tools avail available to me, Sometimes I don't even need a keyboard player, but we won't tell them. <laughs> All right, so we're going to tr create a new track. Again, we can go to the track menu, hit new track, or we can hit shift uh, command N. That will get us there too. And we want to create a new audio track, but we're going to make it stereo because I'm coming out of aux stereo, which will give me a couple cool options, which I'll show you when I pull the... Um, the aux menu up or the aux software window up, which is a really important thing. Let's call this um, delay guitar, and I'll tell you why. All right, so it created delay guitar. Where is it? There it is. Okay, let's drag delay guitar down even further. You know how I like to kind of organize my session. And we're going to click on delay guitar, and we're going to just like we did with the other tracks, we have to assign it to uh, some particular inputs on our Apollo. Now I have an Apollo X8P, so that's gonna give me eight inputs. So I make I make pretty good use of them for just one guy. Um, and then we're gonna hit record. And we're already getting a nice signal. And what I can, what I can do is I can actually grab that input uh, control right here 
you can see how my metering has gone up a bit. I think that's probably good enough right there. I'm gonna pull the fader back because that's pretty loud. And that's a pretty wild delay sound, you can hear that. And uh, I think <laughs> what you'll find interesting is how I got to that point. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that. We're gonna go to, there's our mixer window. Let's go over to the aux window right here. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm using a model of a 412 speaker cabinet mic'd with two large diaphragm condensers. I love to do this. Uh, it's It sounds really great uh, all the time and we can EQ it to flavor later if we want to. But if we take a look at our aux window, I'm playing through a 100 watt amplifier so I have that 100 watt clicked. Right here is where all my cabinets live. I can choose between any number of cabinets from 110 all the way to 412. I just like the way that one sounds, so I'm going to keep it. Um, we can choose different microphones here. And we can choose a second microphone there as well. And the reason I'm going stereo is because I'm sending out um, the signal through two outputs, and then I can send each one to a different channel if I want. But what I've done here is I put them straight up and down, because even though I'm coming on two channels, I want like a really big, fat, punchy guitar sound. Now we have some room sound here as well, and uh, Ox has modeled the room that these cabinets were actually modeled in. And if I solo that up, and I turn off some of my delay and reverb, it sounds like that's the room microphone. And, and that's a common practice with classic guitar recordings that we know and love because uh, they would often mic the room and still do and that's created probably a lot more classic sounds than you realize so that's kind of how i have everything set up right there as far as levels of my aux uh, interface go but uh, what i want to show you here is this master section where i can add eq i can add compression delay or reverb and i do have some compression on here so this is a special kind of compression because it's compressing everything at the end. It's kind of squeezing it all together. And if you watch that needle, you can see it's really holding it there. And that's going to be important for my purposes for this tone. I want to jump down to reverb. Look at that. Lo and behold, it looks like the reverb we've been using in this example. It's a beautiful plate reverb. You're hearing some tremolo. That's actually coming from my pedal board. I have a tremolo pedal on. That's going to be uh, an important part to my tone as well. Now we go to this delay. We're going to turn this on. And we have a delay time set. What I did was there's a formula where you can take the, uh, the BPM of the song and figure out what your milliseconds are. And over here, I found that at, at 118 beats per minute, 381 milliseconds is going to give me this, uh, the, the, uh, the delay time that I desire. Is that nerdy enough for you? Is it crazy? Don't worry about it. But here's the sound it gives me. Synonymous with players like The Edge. You know, they use this kind of thing. It's a dotted eighth repeat. Okay, so we're going to use that for our sound. We got, um, on my pedal board, I have a little bit of overdrive. And um, that's pretty much it. You know, um, the Bloomfield drive behind me, that two rock that we talked about earlier, it's a nice clean pedal platform. And let's just see what we come up with. Let's, let's, take, a, let's take a swing at a track. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'll probably swell into some things with the volume control and, um, or with the volume pedal and see what that gives us. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm playing my PRS DGT. I have the coil tap engaged, so we're just using the bridge pickup. So it's kind of like a single coil type sound. But this guitar is a little beefier than a Strat, so I think it'll be it'll be nice for this option. Let's give it a shot. Okay, here we go.
All right, so at the end there, I just had a little fun. But why did I do this? Why did I change it up? Well, in the beginning, let's talk about that. I wanted to create this nice lush pad of delay and reverb, um, just this atmospheric sound. But then when the chorus kicked in, one thing that's lacking in this track is there's no percussion. There's no tambourine going ticka 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 ticka. So I wanted to create that. And what's going to be cool is when we listen back and play it and mix it, that little sound is just going to be percolating in the background. Percolating. Is that how you say it? Yeah, it's going to go ticka 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 ticka. So with the guitar volume down, you play a quarter note pattern. This is what you'll normally sound like. You'll just hear it through the mic. But when you turn it up and you have the delay at a dotted eighth, you get this sound. What's cool is if you play a D chord, it's a good chance you've heard that sound before, right? It's a great thing to add to your tracks. It's a lot of fun. Uh, with any kind of delay unit, you just want to choose the dotted eighth delay, set your tempo to the track, play quarter notes and there you got it. All right, let's lay another track down with my rig in the aux box. This is gonna be another cool part. You know, in, in country music since the dawn of time, it seems like there's always been some sort of signature lick attached to the song. Think about like Chattahoochee, you know, that kind of thing. We're gonna to attempt to put like a lick track or a signature lick track into this tune. Um, now in the beginning, we don't really wanna clutter it up, but you'll see how it unfolds as we play through the parts we've been playing. We're gonna do audio track again. Again, we're gonna do stereo. We're gonna call this Sig Lick Guitar. And we're gonna hit record. And we're going to pick our input again. It's on three and four for me here. And if we go back to our aux window, same kind of thing going on. I took the delay off, still using the reverb, but I'm using delay on my pedal board from the uh, Nemesis uh, pedal from Source Audio. I'm using the Vemoram Shanks Overdrive pedal uh, and um, some compression that's uh, actually right where it was on the last track. So sometimes when you're moving in, the, in a session and you're going super fast, you just got to lay the parts down and hopefully the engineer can help you deal with it later. <laughs> um, let's pull the volume down a little bit on this guy because we don't want to be too loud. So we're going to go for that kind of sound. All right, so there you have it. That was fun to do for sure. Um, even though we have that delay doing the 16th note thing, I still thought it was nice to have some kind of funky 16th note static guitar. So let's go over to the um, uh, the chorus here, and we're gonna solo the tracks up. I love doing this. We're gonna solo all of our guitar tracks. And what we're gonna do is, even though we have stereo tracks here, we're gonna put the delay guitar to one side, and then we're gonna put the funky guitar Kind of, uh, we'll even it out there at a 10 and two. Let's see what we get, here we go.
All right, there you have it. That's how I would go about adding some tracks with my Oxbox and amplifier into Luna alongside of some of the other great tracks we created with the plugins that Universal Audio offers. All right, this has been episode three of Luna, the recording system from Universal Audio. <laughs> I'm Corey Congilio. I'll remember all that someday. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on episode four where we'll talk about recording an acoustic guitar with a real live microphone. See you then.